Come together again. Oh, this That's could right. go for two hours with these right. fellas here. What All about... Irishmen. <laughs> yeah. what, about, uh, Les, what about Ted's being such a Gabby center on your team? Well, uh, Ralph, we, we knew that his talking would be his major asset in the years to come. <laughs> He was such a Gabby guy that our opponents were almost driven crazy with his talk. <laughs> How about that, Jimmy? That's right. You know, Ted was pretty tall and thin for a center in those days. And whenever the opposing center looked real rough and tough, and Mike was going to give Ted a bad afternoon, using a lean across in a very threatening voice. Now, look, Mike, let's make this clean. No rough stuff, you hear? <laughs> you know it worked. Uh, I got away with it. I, I can believe that. You well, uh, Ralph, Ted was uh, great for our team, but he was even greater for Jimmy and for me. Uh, he brought us into the radio industry, and uh, we were his associates in sports broadcasting. And even today, Ted, we call on those experiences in our everyday work. Did yeah, you say that again. I'm with you. Later. Laugh it up. Two great I will. Okay. Ooh, owe you, you later. everything. Right. Thank you, Jimmy Dolan and Les Quayle. <laughs> June 8th, 1924, Ted. You marry uh, Helen Gelderman. That's right. She has since passed away. September 1924. You see a newspaper advertisement. Radio announcer wanted. Must be a college graduate and have musical knowledge. Applying for the job, uh, you give yourself a fast college degree. What, what was it, Ted? Columbia University. <laughs> your gift of gab more than compensates for your lack of musical knowledge, and you win out over 600 other applicants. As an announcer for RCA stations WJZ and uh, WJY, That's right. you're launched on your brilliant career, which is to embrace all forms of broadcasting, but particularly sports. And as my assistant, Ted showed great promise as a sportscaster. Ted, the man you call your mentor, the great pioneer of sportscasting, who in 1921 did the very first uh, broadcast, the Dempsey Carpentier fight, and has many other memorable firsts to his credit. Now a consulting psychologist in Hollywood, Dr. J. Andrew White. Oh, here's Dr. White right here. Andy. Oh, I am surprised. <laughs> what was it that made Ted a great sports uh, caster, Dr. White? Well, he always had an inherent uh, gift for it, but Ted, it was the flair. He, uh, uh, he perfected himself. I remember in 28 when you were new with the CBS and I was present, you asked me, what is it you do? How do you get something into your voice that I don't? And then I said, Ted, maybe you've lost the field. Maybe you haven't got your nose scraped in the dirt and got stubbed down to the ground. And it might be a good idea to again play some football. This is what he did. <laughs> <laughs> the type of a fellow he is to go and out and win. And that's what made him not only exceptional, but great. I'm oh, to... Andy, I couldn't, I couldn't be more happy than seeing you in person. Thank Bye. you, Dr. <laughs> J. Andrew White. You'll see your old pal a little later. Threshold of your tremendous career, Ted Husing, into the homes of millions of Americans to bring vivid descriptions of colorful events featuring many of the world's greatest athletes. We'll see some of these in a few moments. You relax for just a second here. You could probably use it, huh? <laughs> Brother. <laughs> and now let's listen to this ballad about a brawny, hardy, happy lumberjack in the forests of the Northwest. Timber, timber, now Paul hails from Oregon where the trees reach up a mile. He's a lusty bow with an axe yo ho and look at that big tooth smile. Big Paul's a lucky fella with healthy teeth he's blessed. He's learned to fight old tooth decay with the toothpaste they call Crest. Big Paul's wise. You be wise too, cause chances are your teeth have soft spots in them. And soft spots can turn to cavities unless you turn to Crest. Yes, Crest does something no other toothpaste can do. Hardens those weak places, stops them from turning into cavities. That's because of Crest's own special fluoride, Fluoristan. And Crest freshens your breath, tastes wonderful. So make Crest your family toothpaste and put your fears to rest. Soft spots can turn to cavities unless you turn to Crest. Crest is best, Crest is best, Crest is best. Back to This Is Your Life, Ted Husing. Two months. 1929, Ted. 
Are you enjoying this trip through your life? I certainly am. Attaboy. Now a full-fledged sports announcer, you have a great football season. Cover the first Kentucky Derby and broadcast your first World Series alone. The series between the Athletics and the Chicago Cubs. The fourth game of that series is a dilly. We of the Athletics were behind the Chicago Cubs eight to nothing in the seventh inning. Ted, one of the greatest catchers in baseball history as well as a highly successful manager. Here from Chicago is Mickey Cochran. Come out here, Mickey. Bob Mike. How are you, Mick? What did you call it? Black Mike. Black Mike. <laughs> I think, Mickey, we'd... Uh... We'd best not talk about Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in that seventh inning? Don't think I'm going to ask about it. What happened to that seventh inning back in 1929, Mickey? Oh. Uh, probably the most sensational inning in World Series history. Now, let's see. Your team was behind eight to nothing. That's right. What happened then? Well, the roof fell in, and uh, <laughs> we started a rally and scored ten runs in that one inning. And uh, I believe I scored the tying run, didn't I, Ted? Yes, I... I think I'd like to be able to remember all of the uh, broadcasting, but uh, Max Hawes and, uh, you know, those boys that were with you. Well, everyone said, Ted, you did a wonderful job in bringing that great inning to life to all your oh, listeners. You've been a, me. always a champion to me. Thank you, Mickey Cochran. We hope Mickey Cochran's sports desk will be back on the air in Chicago again real soon. That same year, 1929, Ted, you bring a new talent to the attention of the nation. And here speaking to us from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, is the one and only Guy Lombardo. Lombardo. Right. Ted, do you remember back in Chicago in 1929? You were out in Chicago covering a Big Ten football game. We were just starting our band. We were playing in a local station, and we were playing at the Granada Cafe. The night before the game, you came out to hear us. You were so enthused about the band that you wired your boss in New York and asked them to keep a half hour of network time open after the game. Ted, that led to our first big radio show and our job at the Hotel Roosevelt in New York and a lot of success since then. Ted, the boys and I are eternally grateful and we want to thank you. Ted, good luck and God bless you. Thank you, Guy Lombardo. 1931 now, Ted, your preeminence as a sportscaster is recognized by the United Press as your selected All-America sports announcer, an honor you are to hold for eight consecutive years. Your brilliance and versatility are proven as you bring into the nation's living rooms the outstanding athletic events of the day. Football. Feats of Michigan's great championship teams of 1931, 32, and 33, coached by the great Harry Kipke, now president of the Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Chicago. Yeah. Harry Kipke! Harry! Ted Hart. Oh, Glad to see you. Now, you know, when I was coaching at Michigan, I used to always tell Ted about the special offense and defensive plays we had Everything before the game. Everything was my knowledge. That's right. I always came to you and quizzed you, and you gave it to me quickly. Ted, I did that mainly to, so that you could watch the plays and maybe call them a little ahead of time, and also so that you could do a better job in covering. Ted, yeah. you never broke my confidence. No. You had a great deal of integrity, and you're a great guy. Thank you, Harry Kipke. 1932.